Shalom. How is everybody today? I pray that you're blessed. My name is Stephanie, for those who don't know me, and I share understandings that I receive by God when I read the Word of God. We're going to jump around today. I'm going to do a study in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to do Zechariah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 37. So I'm going to start reading right now and then I'll share with you the understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and which also you stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of the first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and after he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time most of whom until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, to all the apostles, and last of all, as to, ultimate, as to one ultimately born, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, but I pursued the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them. Yet, not I, but the grace of God with me, whether then it was I or they, so, they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ is not raised, then our preaching is in vain, if your faith is also in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, and if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those who also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are of men, we, we are of all men most to be pitied, pitied. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, also in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. After that, those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death, for he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepted, but accepted who put all things in subjection to him. When all things are subjected to him, the son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him so that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? 
if the dead are not raised at all, why then are they baptized for them? Why are we also in danger every hour? I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If from human motives I fought with wild beasts at Ephesus, why does it profit me? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Be sober-minded as you ought, and stop sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But someone will say, how is the dead raised? And what kind of body do they come? You fool, that which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And that which you sow, you do not sow the bo do not sow the body, which is to be but a bare grain, perhaps a wheat or of something else. But God gives it to, gives a body just as he wished and to each the seeds a body of its own. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one flesh of men, another flesh of beast, another flesh of birds, another flesh of fish. There is also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one and the glory of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for the stars differ from star in glory also is the resurrection of the dead if it is sown perish if okay it is sown it is sown a perishable perishable body it is raised an imperishable body it is sown in dishonor, and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Also, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul, and the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural then the spiritual. The first man is from earth, earthly, and the second man is from heaven. As the earth also, so also are those who are earthly, and as is heavenly, so as those who are heavenly. Just as we are born the image of earthly, we will also bear the image of heavenly. Now, I must say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But this perishable will have to put on imperishable, and this mortal will have to put on immortality. Then will come the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory over our, oh, that gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, and knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Zechariah chapter 14. Behold, a day is coming for the Lord, for the Lord, when the spoil taken from you will be divided among you. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured, the houses plundered, and the woman ravished, and half of the city exiled. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fought as he fights on the day of battle 
in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in the middle from the east to the west by a very large valley, so that half the mountain will move towards the north and the other half will move toward the south. You will flee by the valley of my mountains for the for um, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azel. Yes, you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzzah, king of Judah. Then the, then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. In that day, there will be no light. The luminaries will dwindle. For it will be a unique day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But it will come about that evening time there will be light. And in that day, living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea and the other half towards the western sea. And in the summer as well as in the winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. In that day, the Lord will be the only one and his name the only one. All the land will be changed into a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem. But Jerusalem will raise and remain on its site. But from, from Benjamin's gate, as far as the place on the first gate to the corner gate, and from the tower to Hanel and to the king's wine presses, people will live in it, and there will no longer be a curse for Jerusalem for Jerusalem will dwell in security. Now, this will be the plague which the Lord will strike all the people who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet and their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. It will come about in that day that a great panic from the Lord will fall on fall on them and they will seize one another's hand and the hand of one another will be lifted against the hand of another judah also will fight at jerusalem and the wealth of all the surrounding nations will be gathered gold and silver and garments in great abundance so also like this plague will be on the plague on all the horses the mules the camel the donkey on all the cattle that will be in those camps then it will come about that all who are left of the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. It will be um, that whichever of the families of the earth does not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will there be no rain on them. If the family of Egypt does not go up or enter, no rain will fall on them. It will be the plague with which the Lord smites the nations who do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Booths. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations who do not celebrate the Feast of Booths. In that day, there will be inscribed on all the bells of the horses, holy to the Lord, and the cooking pots in the Lord's houses will be like the bowls before the altar. Every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord of hosts. And all who sacrifice will come and take of them and boil in them. And there will no longer be a candidate in the house, in the host of the Lord that day. Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass among them round about, and behold, there were very, me there were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again he said, Prophecy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, 
I will cause breath to enter you and that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you and make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you. And may you come so that you may come alive and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked and behold, sinews were on them and flesh grew and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, son of man, say to the breath, thus says the Lord of God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may come to life. So it prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came unto them and they came to life and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army army. <laughs> Excuse me. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our bones has, have has perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. My people, I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, I will cause you to come up out from your house of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life and I will place you on your own land. And then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord came again to me saying, you, O son of man, take for yourself one stick and write on it for Judah and the sons of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph. The stick, of Ephraim, the stick of Ephraim and all the house of Israel and his companions, and then join them for yourself one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. When the sons of your people speak to you saying, will you not declare to us what you mean by this? Say to them, thus says the Lord, behold, I will take a stick of Joseph which is in the land of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and put them in it with the stick of Judah and make one stick and they will be one in my hand. The stick on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will take the sons of, the sons of Israel among them, the nations, where they have gone and I will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land of the mountains of Israel and one king will be for all of them and they will no longer be two nations and no longer be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols or with their detestable things or with any of their transgressions, but I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned and will cleanse them and they will be my people and I will be their God. My servant David will be the king over them and they will, they will all have one shepherd and they will walk in my ordinances and keep my statutes and observe them. They will live on the land that I give to Jacob my servant in which your fathers lived and they will live on it. They and the sons and the sons and sons forever. And David, my servant will be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them in. It will be an everlasting covenant with them and I will place them and multiply them and will my sanctuary in their midst forever and will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. My dwelling place also will be with them and will be their God and they will be my people. And the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctified Israel. My sanctuary is in the midst 
forever. In the twinkling of an eye, believers shall change and unbelievers shall receive a plague for 1,000 years at the last trumpet. The dead will be raised to live forever. forever. What dies must be dressed with what does not. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. The hell on earth will be those who hate God and choose death as the last enemy to be destroyed is death. When Jesus returns for the believers at the last trumpet, the dead will be raised and corruptible and mortality puts on immortality and believers in Christ are changed